Hi folks, Peter Hill, field agronomist with Pioneer. The eastern half of Texas has been pretty drought stricken, so we're gonna have a lot of acres that are gonna yield from, I mean, honestly, we'll have some at 10 bushels per acre and we'll have some that'll probably do pretty well at 75. So we're gonna have everything in between. One of the things that's very common in a year like this, obviously, because we don't really get the income we're looking for at those kinds of yields, is we want to come out and maybe bail the stocks, try to capture some extra feed. Uh, running short on feeds can be pretty common for some folks. So what I just want to say here in this uh, short video, I certainly understand that, but I, I need you to really pay attention to your nitrate levels, okay? So on drought-stricken corn, a lot of times we'll have nitrates that will build up in the lower third of the stalk. Okay? We don't get the, the proper ear formation because we don't have the water, we don't have the ability to support photosynthesis and all the things that go on with creating grain in the plant. So when we have good growing conditions and then we run into a drought and all of a sudden we don't have the ability to finish an ear, we oftentimes have the nitrates build up in the lower third of the plant. And that's usually what's left when we're ready to come out here after harvest and start bailing this. So we don't need dead cattle or having all kinds of issues feeding these corn stalks after the fact. So it's a simple thing to do to get nitrate tests, look and evaluate what's in your lower stalks before you go out and bale. And you know, if you're gonna sell it to a neighbor or somebody from out of state, uh, it's very important that we monitor nitrate levels in drought stricken corn. All right, so I hope that helps. Good luck and be don't be afraid to holler back with any questions you may have. All right, have a good day. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.